Hello there everybody, I am the Almighty Zentaco, and today we're going to be learning how to do a charge up attack similar to Mega Man for the NES. So I went ahead and set up my frame in advance, um, just so you guys wouldn't have to watch me plugging in animations and whatnot. So I'm going to show you what we have. Um, what we've got here are four actives, which I didn't really name, they're just active two, three, four, and five. Um, these are going to be different attacks that we charge up and launch, okay? Uh, now they are all, they all have a alterable value called damage. Each one has a different damage value. That is gonna be the number that we pull to hurt the player, or I'm sorry, hurt the enemy, which is this uh, active six, this demon looking guy over here. All right, so we're gonna pull from damage for that. They also have an alterable no, they also have a qualifier. I set them all to qualifier zero. This is so we can reference a collision with the qualifier as opposed to referencing a collision with each object individually. So it'll limit it to simply one event instead of four. Uh, I have a counter here. We are gonna use this counter to display uh, how charged the player is. This is the player object. This is a enemy. The player object has three animations. He has a stopped animation, a walking animation, which is actually the animation we're gonna be using for the charge, and a running animation, which is actually just the animation we're using for uh, spitting. I made it three frames because I want it to persist for a second before it, it turns off. So, you know, obviously uh, these names here are completely arbitrary. Um, I don't think you can edit them, unfortunately, but uh, you know, you can use these animations for, for anything you want, but you know, they are called stopped walking and running, even though that's not what they are. This uh, enemy here, he's got a stopped attack or stopped animation and a walking animation. His walking animation is the uh, he, him getting hurt. I'm gonna add some more frames to that so that again, that one will take a bit too. Um, okay, so if we look under our player, he has two values, alterable values. One called charge raw and another called charge converted. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this value, we're gonna calculate this, we're gonna add to it, uh, and then we're gonna convert it in terms of this value. And the reason we do this is going to be hopefully apparent in a second. So <clears throat> we need to firstly set up a um, comment because that helps us to understand our code without it getting all spaghetti-ish, spaghetti-ish. I can't speak. Uh, so first we need to charge the attack. So we are going to use the X button. You can use whatever you want. Uh, we're gonna say the keyboard repeat while key is pressed. That's gonna be the X key. This is going to be us charging it. <clears throat> so when this happens, we are going to set the alterable, actually we're gonna add to the alterable value of charge raw. Okay. So what that means is while we hold in this button, it is going to add one to charge raw every cycle. Uh, I have it set to, that depends, the, how, what this will be depends on your frame rate. I have it set to 60, so this can be roughly 60, you know, a second. <clears throat> uh, now we need to convert it. Convert the value, or sorry, the charge value, whatever. Whatever, all right. This is going to be an always event. We are always going to set the alterable value of charge converted to the value of charge raw, which was under our player object. So grab charge raw. <clears throat> now we want this to uh, be less, uh, this is going to be a large number, like, like I said, 60 a second. We want that to be significantly smaller. So we're going to multiply this by 0 0.01. Um, but we only want this number to be whole numbers. We do not want a float. So we are going to put parentheses around this. And in front, we are going to do something called round. And round does exactly what you what it looks like it would do. It rounds that number to its nearest whole number. So uh, there's also floor and ceiling, which will round it down or round it up. <clears throat> I, I believe, I'm pretty sure it's what they do. So this will give us the value we're looking for. The reason we couldn't do this to, we couldn't like change charge raw to charge raw uh, times 0 0.01 rounded is because it would round that value and so it would never move. So we had to use two values, a raw value and a converted value. I hope that makes sense to you guys. So that is giving us our converted value. Now we have this counter here. So we want to always set this counter's value to be the value of <clears throat> uh, charge converted. So let's go ahead and check this and see how it works. We'll run the frame. I'm gonna hold an X and if I was correct, then this value should go up slowly. It in fact does go up slowly. 
when I let go, nothing happens. <clears throat> so um, now what we want to have happen is that when I let go of the X button, we want to fire the appropriate projectile based on how charged up he is. Um, unfortunately, Fusion does not have a on key release. That would make this easier, but we can get around this really easily. What we're gonna do is use a flag. So under charge the attack where it says repeat while X is pressed, we are going to go to our player and we are going to set a flag on, and that is going to be flag zero. So, <clears throat> now we want to fire the projectiles. Fire the projectiles. So we're gonna do a, another keyboard event. This is going to be repeat while key is pressed, X key. We're gonna negate this. So this is going to run consistently while X is not pressed. <clears throat> but we want this to only happen once, so we are going to go to our player object. We're going to look for that flag. Here it is, and we are gonna ask if it's on. If flag zero is on, and you are not pressing X, we want to go to the player object and set the flag off. That will make sure that this happens only once. This is essentially the way that you uh, create a on key release. So, <clears throat> we need to add another condition here go to the alterable values again. We want to compare the value of charged converted. <clears throat> and we need to do this for um, all four projectiles. So let's copy this event four times. So control C, control V. I mean, sorry, three times. We want four total values, or four total conditions. So each one needs to be different numbers. So this can be charged converted one, this can be two and this is going to be three. <clears throat> but this last one, we want to limit this um, because it's possible, like if I made this equals like this, uh, it's gonna keep charging up, it's gonna get to four, and then it won't fire anything, it's just gonna be stuck on four. So we, instead of this being equals, we're gonna set this to greater or equal. This will limit this, not really limit, it'll make sure that this event fires even if you are been holding the button forever. Meaning that the third projectile is going to be our biggest projectile. So uh, what we want to do then <clears throat> is shoot an object. So click on the player uh, here, and we're going to launch an object, and we're going to do these in order. The first one is the small one. We're going to uh, do the speed of the object as 100, and we're going to use the direction of the player, but you can tweak this to do whatever you want. Then we're going to do this again, and it's going to be the bigger one. Same stuff. And then we're going to launch it again. This is the even bigger one. Same settings. And the last one we are going to launch is the huge one with the skull. And again, we're using the same settings. <clears throat> All right, so we need some animations. So we're gonna we're gonna put a little uh, comment down here. We're gonna type in animations. Animations. I can't spell. All right, so we're gonna trigger these animations uh, in a way that I I haven't done before. I think this is interesting, so I thought you guys might like to know. You can do something called um, it's under the timer. Fire event after given delay. This will allow you to name an event, and it's kind of like a loop, so it lets you, but it doesn't loop. It, it just lets you uh, point to something and let it happen, and it lets you put some stipulations on it. It's just kind of neat. So we are going to <clears throat> go to charge the attack, uh, where it says repeat while X is pressed. We are going to also fire an event after a given delay, except we want this to happen instantly, so we're going to make sure that there is no delay. We get to name this event. We're going to call it anim underscore charge. Now down here, we need to go back to the timer and it's on event and the name of that was nm underscore charge. I also just think it's a nice way to sort of organize your code. It's very obvious what's happening. So on this uh, event here, this is means we're going to be wanting to do the charge animation. So we will be changing the animation of our player to charge. Um, so animation, change animation sequence, and the charge animation is called walking. Let's go ahead and test that. Yep. Oh, something very important I did not do. Um, <clears throat> if you see here, we can hold in the button. When we let go, uh, the counter stays where it's at. We need to set that back down to zero whenever we do the key release. That is very important. So go to the player, alter by values, set, and we're gonna set charge raw to zero and go ahead and do that for all of them. I apologize, I should have done that before.
So we also need a fire animation. <clears throat> so we are going to do the same thing. We are going to fire event after given delay, except we're going to do that under these, these four events here. Make sure there's no delay. And we're going to name this anim underscore fire. So let's go down here under the animation subsetting here, and we are going to click on the timer <clears throat> on event anim underscore fire. And on this one, we are going to change the animation sequence to fire, which was walking. Or sorry, running. Let's go ahead and check that out. Nom, 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 nom. Okay, hold in. Boom. No, that didn't work. Oh, pfft. Uh, it didn't work because I only did it once. <clears throat> go ahead and drag this down to all four events. I'm kind of stupid today. All right. Bonk. There's the small one. There's the number one. There's the number two. There's number three, which is the biggest. Now let's hold it in and see if when we charge past three, if we still get the biggest projectile. And we do. Nom, 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 nom. Okay, so everything is working according to plan. Uh, now we just need to uh, hurt the hurt the enemy. So hurt the enemy. <clears throat> now let's look at our enemy real quick. He has a value called health. So we are going to give him, uh, I don't know, 10 health. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, kill him when he gets below zero. So we'll go to him and we will check the alterable value of health. And if it is lower or equal to zero, we're going to destroy him. We're not even going to give him an animation. This is the point in which you would... Uh... Wait, health lower or equal to zero. Boom. <clears throat> yeah, we're going to destroy him here. And this is the point at which you would also trigger your animations or like maybe put some effects like some clouds or explosions or something. Destroy. <clears throat> but we're not going to do that because I don't really feel like it. All right, now we need to do some collisions. As you recall, probably, uh, we have all of those projectiles are listed under the group zero. So we're going to say collisions overlapping and other object. That object is this dude. Okay, so first thing we want to do is destroy this. And then we want to uh, set or subtract the alterable value. Okay, subtract from health the value under group zero of damage. We actually want to uh, subtract it before we destroy it. So this, I'm worried this might trigger more than once. We might have to put a limitation on how often this can trigger. So we're going to run this. And uh, this is the debugger. So I am going to add him to the debugger, the enemy. Oh, I don't know his name. Uh, all right, sorry. We're going to have to go in here and give him a name. This is why, folks, you always need to name your stuff. This is enemy. This is object player. These are projectiles. All right, so let's do that again. Okay, we're adding the <clears throat> enemy to our debugger. And we want to see his health value. So we can see it right here, it's 10. So here we go. Nine, eight, so those do count for one. Let's see if he blows up. He does blow up. Let's restart that frame. Okay, we're doing a charge attack. That's the hit, I, I hit for two. Here's the attack number two. The hit for three. And here is the fourth attack. This should kill him. Boom. Okay. So, um, yeah, this actually works perfectly. So everything works according to plan. This is a charge of attack. Now, obviously, you know, uh, I don't have any movements for this guy. But if you watch my platform movement tutorial, you should be able to easily and quickly apply this to your platform game or any side scrolling game at all. So I appreciate you guys watching this. I hope this was educational for you. Um, as always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below and I will try to get back to you. Also, I have a Discord channel. Uh, I will be leaving the link in the description. And if you have any questions or just want to make suggestions or just chat, go in there. It's getting pretty big. And uh, there's lots of people in there willing to help you out. So uh, it's probably the best place for you. They can probably get to you faster than I can. And I like to hang out in there too. So thanks for watching, guys. And I hope you have a fantastic day. See you next video.